Now let us consider momentum equation. P1 plus rho1 u1 square equals P2 plus rho2 u2 square plus friction force divided by area. Now here we model the friction effect as a shear stress. And since we know that friction force is directly proportional to the square of velocity, and since velocity is changing throughout the duct, friction force F will change. So what we do is that to evaluate friction force throughout the duct, we take a small differential volume, a small differential volume of length dx and cross-sectional area A, which is constant throughout the duct. And we model the frictional effect as the shear stress at the wall acting on the fluid. Now consider this differential volume of length dx. The inlet conditions are P rho u and the outlet conditions are P plus dp, rho plus d rho and u plus du. Now put these values in this momentum equation. We will get P1 is P plus rho 1 u1 square is rho u square equals p2 is p plus dp now rho 2 u2 square from continuity equation rho 1 u1 equals rho 2 u2 we know that rho 1 is rho u1 is u equals rho 2 is rho plus d rho and u2 is u plus du and P plus dp plus we take rho 2 u2 square as rho 2 u2 rho 2 u2 is rho plus d rho into u plus du which is equal to rho u so rho into u into u2 u2 is u plus du plus and friction force f and for small differential volume we can write it as delta rho friction divided by area A this will simplify to dp plus rho u du plus delta friction divided by A equals 0 so this is our differential form of momentum equation for Fano flow. Now as we have modeled our friction force as a shear stress we can write delta friction equal to we know that friction force is shear stress tau w into surface area ds. We know wall shear stress as half into coefficient of friction into rho into u square das as perimeter p into dx here p is perimeter now friction factor f is four times coefficient of friction friction factor f is four times coefficient of friction cf and we can write it as half into f by 4 into rho u square into perimeter p into dx now divide this equation by a which is cross sectional area cross sectional area now perimeter p divided by area A will be equal to perimeter P is pi D area A is pi D square by 4 this will be equal to 4 divided by D 1 by 2 into F by 4 into rho u square into 4 by D into dx this 4 this for are gone half rho u square into f by d into dx f by d into dx now put this term 
in our differential form of momentum equation let us call it equation number a we will get dp plus rho u du plus half rho u square into friction factor f divided by d into dx equal to 0 now with this differential momentum equation let us call it equation number b and we take differential form of continuity equation differential form of energy equation and differential form of equation of state and combining all these four differential equations we find out f by d into dx term as a function of Mach number as a function of Mach number I am not going to derive this equation f by d into dx equals function of Mach number if you want to derive you can see the derivation in any standard book now I will write down what will be f by d dx as a function of m now we know that all final flows tends to Mach number tends to Mach number equals 1 so it is again convenient to use the critical point which is sonic state as a reference point and we will express properties of the fluid relative to critical point properties now we will integrate this equation from Mach number equals m and x equal to 0 to Mach number equals 1 and x equals L star. So our final equation f L star by d as a function of m will come out to be f L star by d equal to Now what does L star, what does L star represents? So L star represents the length, it represents the length of the duct between a given section where Mach number is M, look at this figure, where the Mach number is M and an imaginary section where sonic conditions occur, imaginary section where Mach number m equals 1 occurs. So this is L star. I am repeating it again. L star represents the length of the duct between given section where Mach number is m and an imaginary section where sonic conditions occur. We call this L star as sonic length. It is also called as critical length from this equation we know that L star is inversely proportional to friction factor F what does it mean it means that for a given Mach number M L star is large L star will be large for ducts with smooth surfaces for ducts with smooth surfaces and L star will be small for ducts with rough surfaces. Now look at the figure again. The actual length of the duct is L. The fluid is entering at in state 1 and leaving the duct as state 2. The actual length is L. Now we will define L1 star. We know that L1 star is the length L1 star is the length of the duct which is needed to reach sonic conditions from initial conditions Mach number M1 and we can also define L2 star L2 star which will be the length of the duct required to reach Mach number equals 1 from initial Mach number M2 from initial Mach number M2 so this is length L which is actual length 
this length l1 star and this is length l2 star fl by d fl by d will be equal to fl1 star by d minus fl2 star by d this is at 1 and fl2 star which is at 2 now if f is constant friction factor is constant throughout the duct and we have taken constant area duct so from this equation we can write l will be equal to l1 star minus l2 star earlier we have defined Fano tables in Fano tables fl star by d as a function of m is also tabulated fl star by d as a function of m is also tabulated and friction factor f is generally determined from moody chart moody chart or colebrook equation or colebrook equation now questions come into our mind that what will happen if we increase length of the duct beyond l star beyond l star we know that l star is the length of the duct to reach sonic conditions l star is the length to reach sonic conditions but what if we keep on increasing the length of the duct what will happen first let us consider that the inlet flow is subsonic Mach number m1 is less than 1 now if we keep on increasing l beyond l star as we know that after length l star the flow becomes sonic meaning m equal to 1 and at this point the entropy s is maximum entropy s is maximum so if we again increase length l beyond l star does our flow become supersonic does our flow become supersonic the answer is a definite no because as we have seen that at Mach number one our entropy is maximum and if the flow wants to become supersonic its entropy will have to be decreased its entropy will have to decrease and that is not possible in Fano flow because the Fano flow is a flow with friction and in friction entropy never decreases so what happens when we increase L beyond L star what happens is that our sonic condition M equals 1 will be achieved at the exit hence our flow cannot go beyond mark number 1 hence we can say that our flow is choked our flow is choked and our critical condition which is sonic conditions further moves downstream it further moves downstream and this reduces the mass flow rate this reduces the mass flow rate and due to this the inlet condition change inlet condition change to a lower Mach number to a lower Mach number M what will happen if the inlet condition are supersonic what will happen if the inlet condition are supersonic means M1 is greater than 1 we know that friction causes supersonic Fano flow in a constant area duct to decelerate its Mach number decreases towards unity therefore exit Mach number becomes m equal 1 if our duct length is L star exit Mach number will become n equal 1 if our duct length is L star like that happens in a subsonic flow but unlike subsonic flow unlike subsonic flow increasing duct length beyond L star cannot chalk the flow since it is already chalked supersonic flow is already chalked and increasing length beyond L star 
cannot choke the flow instead what happens is that it causes a normal shock wave it causes a normal shock wave when a normal shock wave happens the supersonic flow becomes subsonic and the continuing subsonic flow becomes sonic again it causes a normal shock wave to occur at a such a location that the continuing subsonic flow becomes sonic again exactly at the duct exit exactly at duct exit and as we keep on increasing length as we keep on increasing length the location of normal shock wave location of normal shock wave moves further upstream location moves further upstream eventually the shock occurs at the duct inlet the shock occurs at the duct inlet and further increasing duct length moves the shock to the diverging section of converging diverging nozzle that generates supersonic flow at the inlet of the duct i am repeating it again further increasing the length of the duct moves the shock to the diverging section of the converging diverging section that generates supersonic flow at the duct inlet and what happens to the mass flow rate since we know that in supersonic flow flow is already chucked and mass flow rate remains constant mass flow rate remains constant 